Okay, it's my pleasure to have here with us today here on Mommy Chat with Olusoye. And I have my dear sister and friend, Mujisola Obazwaye, who I've, I've known for a while now, and I've seen her evolve in doing a whole lot of wonderful and amazing things. And I'm sure you're going to find her um, very interesting as well when she wants to share her journey with you and, you know, talking to us today about motherhood and career, the delicate balance. So thank you, Moji, for coming in here to share with our community. Thank you for being a part of today's um, program. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you, Lucia, for having me. It's really my pleasure. I'm always happy to, to get together with mm -hmm. women who are purposeful and driven and kingdom-minded. Mm -hmm. And doing great and amazing things. So it's my pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you so much. And then we are just going to get right into, uh, into it. Uh, before we get into it, I'm just going to see if you have any comments, questions, or whatever you want to share. Please don't forget that you can drop them in the chat and we will take them as we go along. I'm going to start, of course, at the very beginning, which is to let mm -hmm. Mojisola tell us a little bit about herself, her journey, up until um, you know this moment uh, that she is right now. Just a little about what you do and then just a bit about your journey. Of course, uh, um, uh, like I said before, it's really my pleasure to be here tonight. And um, I see there are a lot of amazing women here to, tonight. So just like yourself, um, first of all, I'm a wife to one amazing man and I'm a mom to two sons. And they are 16 and 14. And I'm a working mom. I'm a, I'm a working professional. So I'm a HR resource and business partner. And I work within the telecommunication space. So I've only just returned to work now in the past uh, two years, October 2018. And it's been an amazing journey for me to get here. So, and that's, uh, I will be sharing more about that um, on this call tonight. So in the past two years, I've actually been working on my career. Everything I do right now is centered around my career. So before I returned to work, I took about five years of work, uh, the corporate world. I took about five years whereby I was working from home doing my own online business and also being mom, which was deliberate for me. I wanted some time. I wanted a breather after working in the corporate space for about 10 years before I took the break. So um, before then, I came to Ireland in about 2014 and I've lived here since then, which is about 16 going to 17 years. I started my career journey in Oyster Bank, ACC Bank, uh, Permanent ESB, and Royal Bank of Scotland. That was how I started my career. And I started really well. At the time, I was pregnant with Sammy, and I went back to college to get a, a second first degree. That was about the time that I moved here. And I did that degree in sciences, just like, like a top up to the degree that I got from Nigeria, University of Ibadan in microbiology. So even all of that time, my journey was kind of rocky when it, when it comes to my career. I have so much to say, but I think as we go along, uh, I would tell you more. So if there's anyone on the call tonight who is confused, who needs a little bit of support, I, I hope that my journey can really inspire you. You know, and I've also just fully uh, rebranded myself. I've just fully retransitioned some of the offerings that I uh, do offer, some of the things I used to do. A lot of time, I don't do them anymore. So I've aligned my career life to my uh, business life and to everything that I do really. And I'm really um, excited to share more tonight. And I hope that you are able to learn from my journey. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, it does. Absolutely makes sense. I'm going to pick okay. you up, you know, right from there. I'm just going to ask a few questions. My first question will be, I mean, the courage to even start over. 
like you had to do a second first degree. You know, oh, yeah. I'll be pregnant. How many people I, are going to say, I want to go back to school and do a whole full degree again? It's a tough thing. So what was your mindset like? What made you make that decision and, you know, to get to this point where you are today? So I, I think that one of the things I would actually, I would, I would focus on three C's tonight. And I'm glad that you started with courage. So I'm going to focus on clarity, courage, and confidence. Those three would help anybody, anybody on their journey, whether their career or whether they're trying to launch a business or start a ministry or anything at all. We tend to look at career as only working nine to five. Career could be having your own business, working from home or launching a course or uh, teaching women or coaching women. Anything could be your career depending on what you want on your journey. So back to your question, what gave me the courage was that I know where I am from, okay? I came from Nigeria. You, we all know that we Nigerians, we love books. We love to be successful. And that was the, the motivation for me at the time in 2006 for me to go back to college because I wanted to fully integrate myself into the Irish system. And for me to be able to kind of level up, I needed to do something that I've never done before so I can have access to what I ordinarily may not have access to. So at the time when I went to college, I was pregnant, like I said, I did that and it really helped me on my career journey to launch into the corporate world properly here in Ireland and for me to propel my career forward. And that was the motivating factor for me at the time. Oh, fantastic. You know, and I love what you say about the three C's, clarity, courage, confidence. Because I feel like for every step of the journey, so whether it was going back to school mm. or even going back to work, rebranding yourself, starting off a new thing you're doing. Because I mean, I mean, we worked together before in the past, right? So even your ability, you've written, you only you've written quite a number of books. All those things you've done so far on your journey, it's always been clarity, it's always been yeah. courage, it's always been confidence. Yes. And I love that you start off with those three things because I feel like if we all got clarity about what do I really, want, what do I want, and do I have the courage to pursue these things, or am I allowing the world or people, what people will think or what they will say, to limit me in in going for this thing I really want? Or will I allow my background or my past circumstances to hold me down, right? And then having the confidence to say, you know what, I'm fine, even if nobody believes in me. I'm good, Absolutely. even if nobody thinks that this thing I'm doing makes sense, right? And, yeah. and that will lead me to, to the next question, uh, you know, around, you know, you, you transitioned, you went back to school, started working, you know, and in the time that you worked with, you know, having a child, what did that look like for you, you know, in terms of, I know that you are a very disciplined person. I mean, <laughs> I know you are a very disciplined person. If you could just share with us some of those things that helped you in that area, you know, like the kind of discipline you have to have to say, you know, what is what I want? And even though I'm a mom, I must still be able to get all of these things done. You can just touch on that in all the different things you've done so far, writing a book or writing books, you know, writing books, launching programs, um, coaching people, things like that. If you can just share across all, all of those things that you've done? Of course, I can share. You see, that time that I went back to school, it was such a long time ago. It was in 2006. I went back to school to, to do a second, first degree in, in industrial biology with bioinformatics. At the time, I started my career. But what really kept me going at the time was that I knew that coming from Nigeria up to here. We, we hear a lot of stories of people who come abroad and do many our jobs, okay? They do all sorts of things because they don't have that courage to pursue what frightens them. In my own case, I, I knew that I, I needed to complete it because then I had, I had, I had just given back to Sami. I gave back to Sami. I had to leave the boy at about two months at the crash. Usually, you've been in Canada now for a long time. For you to leave your child in a crash, you have to be about, the child has to be about three months old. Mm -hmm. 
So I had to kind of lobby for Sammy to be taken off me at two months old. So I found a crash right behind my college and I continued like that. And it, it took a lot of determination for me to do this. It took a lot of dedication. I had to make a lot of sacrifice for me to be able to do it. Sacrifice included me rising up early and maybe staying up late while nursing the child, still breastfeeding the child. But I knew that it was doable. And at the time, I hadn't still incorporated myself into the IRA system. I have to be extremely honest. However, I had the support of my husband as well. So he came in Andy. My journey is such a long one in the sense that I continue my career like that. And when I decided to take a career break, something happened to me. It was a time that I was made redundant. So as I went on, on my career journey, I eventually got made redundant. But it was in that time, if anyone has read my book, Use What You Have, that I truly started coming into my own. I started discovering myself. I started know, becoming like a real woman to know exactly mm, what are the things that I truly want and what are the things that I didn't want. Even at the time, I wasn't totally sure. I wasn't clear. I just did things that I liked. And from doing the things that I truly liked, that I enjoyed, I began to know who I am. Oh, I began to separate the things that are important to the things that I felt like they are important. I began to separate the things that mm, are meaningful to things that I can just do for fun, you know? And as you know, a lot of people would know me as a fashion blogger. I, I started online as a fashion blogger. And this was the time when I was at home that I decided to, okay, let me be mom and let me start something on the side. So I was able to juggle that. But even while I was at home, I was very dedicated. I was so committed to my, to my craft. From my bedroom, I was working with international clients, creating content for them, uh, styling women internationally. I would fly to England uh, to work with women, to style them. So that was my journey. My journey continued like that. And when I was ready to go back to work after about five years again, Okay, I went back to school again, and this time to get a master's. So I did a master's around what I was doing at the time. I did my uh, master's in fashion buying and management, thinking I wanted to be a fashion buyer. As part of my course, I needed to get an internship, okay? So it was that internship, during that inter internship that I got this aha moment again. This wasn't what I wanted to be doing. And I, I, I paid about 11750 for that course. And I came home and told my husband, this is not what I want to be doing. Even though I like to style women, I like to help women, I knew there was something not right at the time. So I took a little step back again. And I just went back to the father. I'm going to go all spiritual now to say, God help me, you know, commit your, all your ways into the hands of the Lord and he will guide you, you know. That was the scripture that I held on to. So I went back to God and said, help me, Father, okay? So on this particular journey that I embarked on again, I finished this course and I couldn't find any opportunity in that area. So God was telling me something. In fact, I flew to London to interview twice. You know, I interviewed twice somewhere in London for me to get opportunity within that field. It just did not happen for me, but God was telling me something and I listened. So eventually I got this opportunity. I hired myself a career coach to start with. So when I hired myself this career coach, she started talking to me about, oh, you're very talented. You're very gifted. I know you have a lot inside of you. And she gave me pointers to follow. I did, as she said, at about 30 days after I started working with this career coach, she even told me at the time that, MJ, I think that you should consider taking a, a career coaching course yourself, you know, because when she started talking to me, she felt like inside of me, there was a lot 
and I selected my coach very carefully. So I went back to work. I got this opportunity in this uh, human resources software company. Uh, it was just like a, a mid-level position. And from that moment, going back into that organization, everything took a different turn for me. I got clarity on what I wanted. I knew I wanted to help people, but in what area? With a career, uh, then I, I got affiliated with human resources as an associate. From that being an associate, I went on to do my certification to be a professional human resources consultant. I did that. And since then, everything took a different turn for me. And God is so gracious to me in the sense that since that moment that I said, God help me, he really showed himself to me that, girl, you can do this. So I was very determined. First, I got clarity. Secondly, I was courageous. People were like, girl, what are you doing? Then confidently, even the people who have gone really farther ahead in their career, they began to look up to me and it really helped me to propel my journey forward. In less than two years, October 2018 up to now, I've been promoted three times. I changed organization. This, this January, I stepped into a brand new opportunity at work and it's, it's been incredible. I don't know how I did it, but I believe very strongly those three things helped me getting clarity. What is it that I wanted? I knew that I wanted to help people. I don't know how, but I just asked the father to show me how. Then I followed. I followed through all the way. I did everything. So in the past three years or so, I've spent almost like maybe, let's just say 18,000 euros on education, but it's the best investment I've ever made in myself. And the way God did it, COVID eat, I've been saying I wanted to help people. I wanted to help people. How? God just showed me, boom, light bulb moments with your career. So in my day job, I, work, I help people in their career. Okay, I sit on tables where decisions are made for who gets hired and all. And in my business life now, after I fully transitioned, rebranded myself, I'm helping people to, to go back to work, to get clarity on their job, to get progression and all that. And since the, the uh, COVID hit, uh, by the grace of God, we've helped about 42 professionals, some of them back to work, some of them change career, some of them gain promotion. It's been incredible. It's been incredible. <laughs> that was long. Wow. <laughs> wow, you know what? You know, I've known you for a while, NJ. And one of the things that stands out to me about you is your ability to actually diligently pursue what you want mm -hmm. and not be afraid to share your story, right? So if, if I don't know if anybody here was at the or the Amin Malawi conference, MJ was the one who shared with us about personal branding and all of that, right? Because what, what you've done is the same thing that worked for you when you were doing fashion. Yeah. You carried the same energy, the same tactics, and you took it into, now I'm a career coach. I've transitioned. I'm going to tell the world about what I do. And I continually tell my story. And that's what I've seen you do. Like, even though nobody even knows that you transition, like people just don't <laughs> even care. They're like, okay, I'm just gonna go with you wherever you're going. Mm -hmm. Because they, they trust you, they like you because of what they've experienced with you in the past. So I just wanted to, to touch a little bit about that. Like, how can someone, you know, get this confidence to just say, I'm gonna share my story. I don't care what you think, and just consistently continue to share the story of what they're doing. How I, I know if I just can just say this, I remember, let me backtrack. I remember that there was a time that you shared your something and you became an affiliate, for instance, or, or one of the one of the fashion um, people and the people were paying you because people were registering to go to a school through you. And that you sharing your story that brought you other opportunities that are not even in your direct line of sight. Yes. Okay, so I hear you say, you know, get clarity. But I, but I also want to say, I've seen you take literally tiny things and make them a big deal. You, you taught me, for instance, how to use YouTube well, because you use YouTube. It, it's not your, your career, but because of the way you carry the same energy, the same tactics, the same strategy, you've taken them and say, you know what, I'm gonna use the same thing 
in this other area of my life. So what can you say has been your journey on that route of taking the same wisdom and applying across board and ensuring that you now excel and you're now an authority in this field that you just started what when, you know, a short while ago, but you're an authority. Exactly. <laughs> I, I think that I, 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 I sincerely appreciate you yourself because I, I see you and I watch you all the time. I may not say a lot, but I think I'm surrounded also by a lot of people. I'll tell you one of the reasons why I'm very consistent with my story. You see, in my inbox, I get so many messages and from women, some of them coaches, some of them have fancy titles. I recently got um, a message from a big sister of mine. She said, MJ, you said something to me. And that really propelled me to get an office space in London, somewhere very nice. She showed me this high rise building. Another one said to me, MJ, because of the videos that you shared, especially when I shared that one about from stay at home mom to getting a master's, because I always share my story. Someone said to me that they went back to the university and they now lecture in a, um, in a university in London. So this would be the reason why I share my story consistently. We live in an online world whereby people only share the good side. I have learned on my journey, even some of the most successful brands in this world, they share their pain, they share their gain. In my own case, I've learned to share my pain and also to share my gain. And I'll tell you, my pain always converts into business for me. And that's the truth. People who share the perfect picture, a lot of times don't get the lead that I get. I still consider myself a small brand. The same thing I did with my career is the same thing I'm doing in my business life. And talking about YouTube, YouTube is such a platform that you can leverage globally, globally. And by the grace of God, I've been able to do that. You know, recently I've just finished a, um, a personal statement and a CV for someone in the University of Nottingham. They want to lecture and they reached out to me recently to say, oh, MJ, um, I watched one of your videos and that's why I contacted you, you know. And that's why I share my story. I share my story because I know that a lot of women like me who have been mothers, probably at home at the moment, they don't know exactly what they want to do. And nobody said, oh, this is what you can do. And that's why I share my story to make myself vulnerable so people can know, oh, this is what she does. She doesn't have it all. She's not perfect. However, that story is what helps me to be to continue to show up every day knowing that i impact life and when i read comments maybe on my facebook people will say oh you've invested so much in me oh how did i meet you online it's just it's just been authentic really it's just knowing that if i continue to share i can change lives it's not all about oh i want to blow up i want to be popular is doing meaningful work, is having, sticking to my why all the time that if I show up, and talking about not caring what people think, this is now my, my, my main goal, to show up without feeling afraid, to show up courageously, to show up that I'm showing up for people who really need me. I'm not showing up for people who will critique me. That is inevitable. I'm showing up for people who really need me, who want to hear what I say. I, 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 I spoke with someone yesterday. I know she wouldn't mind me saying her name. Her name is Ellen and she's uh, in somewhere, somewhere in Scotland. She said to me, MJ, the things that you share is the reason why I'm uh, leaving my job. I was just like, that's, that's courageous. You should leave your job because you don't like your job. Today, I rise up, go to my work smiling. So what I do in my day life now is what I do in my corporate life. And it's amazing. It's amazing. And that's why clarity is important. You have to be courageous to pursue and confidence to show up every day, knowing that you would make an uh, impact in this life. You will change your own life and you change the lives of people who are really looking at you. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to be known for. 
Wow, thank you for <laughs> sharing that. You know, and my next question will be, I mean, something around that, which is that I see a lot of people that are in careers, right? They go to, I mean, all of like I said, all of us are in careers, right? <laughs> you know, no matter, no matter they are working for yourself in a career, just working. Yes, of course. Right? Of course. <laughs> you know, what I what I see is that a lot of people are so consumed by the current challenge of the career mm. that they refuse to continually build a personal brand, both at work and outside, that they always feel like they're in a fix. They can't even make a change and say, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. I think I want to do this. It's easy, it was easier for you to make a transition because you have been, you are your own person. Your career is not what defines you. No. You are who you are. You are MJ. You're not bothered. You're not allowing your career to be, to put in a box. It's why it was easy for you to be fluid in your, I said, you know what, I, I don't want this anymore. I can, I can fluidly move into yeah. a new space with courage and with confidence because yeah. I am who I am. I believe yeah. in myself. I have this courage that God has given me. And I'm going to show up with all of all that I am, right? So what advice would you have for people who, you know, just generally for people that are in careers and just allow themselves to be so caught up in the work, they are not constantly building a personal brand for themselves, even at work. Like people should know you and say, oh, if you go to her, she can solve this problem. Both exactly. at work and even outside work so that people can see you as a problem solver, solution provider to the challenge that they are currently facing and not allowing them to be stuck only on this job and only be known for this thing. And, and all of that? I think that it takes a lot. It, that journey sometimes can take months. Sometimes it can take years. For me, I think it took me a long time. But one thing I did consistently was that I continued to do the things that I truly enjoyed. Okay. And from those things that I enjoyed, I, I was able to figure out, okay, what is working? and what is not working, all right? So I gently separated what is working from what wasn't working. And the only thing I now uh, focused on were the things that were working. And then my next thought of action was, how can I stretch what was working? In my own case, I wanted my professional life to match my personal life. So when people think of, MJ in the workplace, they think of a career woman who is really making impact in the workplace. And also, if they think of MJ outside of work, it's still the same person, even though the audience at work will be different from the audience in real life, I still want to be known for the same thing. So in anybody's case who, who is consumed by what they are doing in their real life, a lot of people actually, and I know you, I've known you for years now, and you've coached me before. I reached out to you many years ago to say, listen, coach, this is what I need help with. And you helped me. And I will tell you, after I finished my coaching with you, maybe I've never shared with, uh, one of the things that you taught me in my coaching with you, someone actually reached out to me and said, oh, MJ, I needed help with this. I actually taught them exactly what you taught me and I got paid for it too. Interesting. So, <laughs> so when people are confused like that, this is a, a different twist and turn for me. I would strongly say, look for someone that you truly trust and pick their brain on what your next best step should be. I shared it from the beginning. I, I had to prayerfully pick out my coach. In fact, she wasn't even a Christian. She was just very highly skilled and experienced in what I needed help with. And I'm telling you, in the next 30 days after I worked with her, and after I worked with you as well, I found my way. I found my way and I was able to actually focus and embrace the things that were really making me afraid. I embraced them and I took one step at a time, one small step at a time and continued to move ahead like that. And that was how I find my way. I, I found my way. In anybody's case, we so engrossed in their work. I would say, take a moment, spend some time with yourself. Spend some time and listen to yourself. Let me show you one of the things that I did. 
I, I actually got this journal dedicated to career women. Everywhere that I go to, I always talk about this journal. Mm. How this journal changed my life. At the time, I wasn't really sure about where to go, how to go about it. I, I got this journal. I got that coach, both of them. And with the help of God, I started writing who I want to be, what I want to be, and why I want to be those things. And if I open this journal, it's so amazing that some of the things that I wrote here. The name of the journal is, is by Mufolu Ashoy Levery. She's one of us. If you've been here for a while, you will have yes, known that she's from the Yeah. Confident that's correct. Women. I got it. And part of what I wrote in this journal is this. A woman in a befitting job, one that matches my skill set, experience, and knowledge. A woman who prays more, loves more, listens more, gives more, and joyful at all times. A woman who is fit with no hate in her body, face, and weight. A woman who works tall, contributing to a reputable organization, and making impact. A woman whose brand is growing, reaching more audience, and getting opportunities to monetize. A woman whose sight of her children, husband, family doesn't make her feel stressed because she's not in a role she can call her own. A woman who takes care of other people. It's not coincidental that everything that I've written here, I now have today. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, with the help of God, you can really, really be whoever you want to be. So if you are ever in a place or in a job whereby you're not happy, you feel so, uh, um, you, you feel so locked up in that, in that space, I think it is time to courageously step out and begin to do things that are really important to you. In my own case, I said it, everything that I was doing before, I enjoyed them. However, the things that weren't working anymore, I started leaving them one at a time. You'll notice my Instagram page, anyone who goes there, I had about maybe 2,000 plus pictures. I deleted everything. For you to change, hmm. a lot of things will need to, to change. Yes. A lot of things will change. I deleted all the photos which were centered just around fashion. Oh Who I want to be, I pictured myself there oh and my I God. did everything that will help me to get there. I deleted everything. We launched a brand new website and everything started working together mm. for my good. It's amazing. And if you need to change, everything must change. Yes. I changed yes. my circle, the people that I mingle with, where I want to be in my career. I started seeking people in that area. I connected with them. I'm not using them now. I connected with them. I started learning from them. I invested so much in them so I can learn from them. Wow. Another thing that I did is that I also changed my church. Hmm. It's amazing. It's, it's crazy, but I'm not saying go and change your church, but I knew that everything that wasn't working, hmm. I needed to let go of them and embrace the things that will work. Embracing the Father first, and helping the Holy Spirit to direct me and guide me, it's been amazing. I'm, I'm not going to lie, it's been wow. amazing. Wow, been you know, amazing. I'm, I'm so pumped right now because somebody's <laughs> putting it in the, in the chat and saying, like a recap, I was gonna say, VIP Moms Club people here, do you feel like we're having a second coaching call that we've had for the last, I'm not even kidding. We just talked about creating the life we want, life by design. Can mm -hmm. you visualize, can you create a vision or what you want for yourself, like what you really want. Because if you don't know what you want, how do you know what is not working? How do you yeah. know it's not aligning to who you want to be? How mm -hmm. do you know to recalibrate? How do you know, how do you know to re refocus your life and say, no, no, it's not working because it doesn't align with what I want? My mm. goodness. I feel like you've touched on a whole lot of things just by sharing this point. And I want to pick up one of the things you shared, which is one of the things that I usually like to tell people is, who do you want to be like? There's always somebody who you can use, or maybe two or three people, or four or five, depending on the on kind of person you want to be, that you can look at and say, this person looks like where I'm going. Can I, can I follow her path? Can I let her be my courageous person that I'm looking up to? Can she mm -hmm. be my guide in terms of, 
of, of who I need to be. And you won't say, oh, now that I want her to be my guide, so she should just download everything for me. See what you've yeah. talked about, investing an amount of money yourself. I'm going to get mm-hmm. a career coach. I'm going to pay her this amount of money. I, I look at it as an investment towards who I want to be. I don't yeah. see people who are just, just I don't care, I wouldn't. Even the one that they get for free, they're not even using it well. <laughs> not to speak of the one that they say, come and pay for. They're not even mm-hmm. willing to think about paying for something. And I look mm-hmm. at it and say, you want to get better? You are joking. You're not ready yet. <laughs> you better be willing to invest in yourself. Be and to the, in your the investment dreams. always comes back. They come back. Yeah. They actually come back. They, they, they really come back. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not bragging now. We launched the website on February the 4th. Mm-hmm. Uh, the turnover has been crazy. I, I don't believe it myself. Wow, but I'm so happy to hear that. Just investing, investing mm-hmm. in myself, in my journey. And coach, speaking about investment, when I was going to transition, I chose four people, okay? One was a junior mentor. This person was just 25 years old, okay? I'm 41 next month, in, mm-hmm. in two days actually. <laughs> One was about 45. It, it's not even about age. So she was right in the position that I wanted to be, to be a business partner. And the other one was way up there. I just met with her and, and wrote to her very passionately that I want you to be my mentor. Hold my hand, you know, and I serve them. What I mean by serve them, they were launching their uh, startup. I committed to helping them with their startup, with their new launch. So it's kind of give and take mm-hmm. kind of thing. And when you talk about investing monetarily in maybe coaching or a course, it always comes back. I'm not joking. Mm-hmm. It will come back to you. It will, I've experienced it so many times in my life that every time I put my hands in my course yeah. Yeah. to invest in anything, it always comes back to me. Mm-hmm. I've enjoyed that privilege in my life. Mm-hmm. So. Anyone listening, you if you want to really, really transition or change your life, your journey, your career, you need to do a lot of investment. You need to do a lot of investment. You invest in your niece, you invest in your association or network, you invest in coaching, you invest in learning and development. You will blow, I'm telling you. That's it. That's <laughs> you it. And I blow. love what someone is saying here. So you are the value. Work on you. Mm. A lot of us, it's like we don't even see value in ourselves. So we don't see mm. ourselves as valuable enough to invest in. Even if I never get the job. Yeah. I've invested in myself and I'm fine. Like, I'm, it's okay. If I never get any dime out of what I've done, yeah. I'm worth the investment anyway. You get what I mean? But a lot of us yeah. are just like, oh, whatever. Just, just allow your life to be anyhow. So you don't think, yeah. what can I do? That next <laughs> level I need to get to. I need someone to hold my hands to get there. Who can yeah. I speak to? You just be quiet and think that things are going to fall into your laps. You sometimes no. you need to get up and look for what you want. Find no. people that are there and say, can you help me? How can, I, how can you support me in this role? How can I do yeah. this better? Every single investment you make in yourself can never, ever, ever go to waste. Can I never believe- go to waste. You cannot yeah. go to waste. You know, so whatever you have to do, clarify your vision. What do I want for myself? And start to take steps towards getting to that place you want to go. And that kind of like leads me to one other, like, it's like a runoff question, if I, if, I, if I can say that, which is about this mentorship issue, right? Which is, uh, you wanted to be somewhere, and then you said, okay, this person will be good for me. And I just want to ask, I know that quite a number of ladies are here listening, uh, and, you know, maybe they're thinking their minds, I want to get a mentor, but what should I be looking out for? In, in a mentorship relationship? Can it just be anybody I find that is in my career? Or are there particular things that I need to watch out for so that I'm sure that this person that I've picked will be the kind of person that can actually add value to me? I, I think that uh, choosing a mentor is, is not uh, something you can just do because you think that person is successful. Your values also have to align, you know, your values have to align with that person. So basically, when when you see a mirror of who you want to be, you will always know. You will always know. So if, if for example, I need uh, maybe some sort of support 
in an area of my life, maybe finance, you know, you will be able to align yourself with that person's value first before you think that, oh, they can help you. I personally won't just choose anybody. Like I said before, the career coach that I used is not, uh, wasn't a Christian at the time, you know, she's not even, you know, Christian. However, she's very highly skilled in that area. She's, I, I read her profile and I also saw some values in her profile that actually felt like me, mm. even though we don't share the same uh, beliefs or faith, you know. The, you know, a style of coaching is very empathic, you know, mm. and that's my style of coaching as well. And what she, what she knew at the time or what she knows is something I was aspiring to be. Mm. So she has that thing. And that was what really attracted me to them in that case. However, choosing your mentor, you can ask the spirit of God to direct you to somebody. However, you still have to watch them. Mm. You look at them, are they mirroring to you who you want to be? Mm. That's one thing I consider. If anyone is mirroring to me who I want to be, then they are probably going to be my mentor or my coach. That is one thing to always look out for. Are they mirroring to me who I want to be? That's one thing I always look out for. For example, I'm, I'm still in a mid level in my career journey. So the next phase for me, I already know. So, and when I would choose little things like this, the person who wrote this channel, I'm not trying to sell it by the way. So that's okay, she's even my friend. She, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. If, if people want to buy, that's totally fine. Exactly. Exactly. I will, with the seller if you want. Uh, yes, I, I will recommend it to you. Where they are right now is the next phase for me on my own career journey. And they also mirror to me who I want to be. Will I consider them as coach? Yes. So always look at someone or look for someone who mirrors to you what you want to be. That's one thing I always consider. So if they are mirroring to me what I want to be, I may consider them whether is the service is gonna be free or paid. I always look for someone who mirrors to me who I want to be or where I want to be. Absolutely, I love it. And you know, one of the things that, that, um, that, I, that I want to say you know, more on that is, is like, because a lot of people are not clear about what they want. So it's tough. I don't know what yeah. you want. How do you even know whether that person has it? That's why you see people chasing around the popular people because well, they sound like a good idea. Of a mentor, but I'm like, no, they can't be my mentor because they don't even. I'm not even sure that I align with what what they're doing, right? Exactly. You need to be clear. What do I want? What do I want? Yeah. About? A lot of us are not willing to do that work, that exercise, that assignment of who do I really want to be? What yeah. are my values? What things resonate with me? What kind mm. of person do I want to be? Honestly, like you have to be clear because until you are clear, you're not going to be able to move very courageously, actually. You can move, but you will move courageously and confidently in the direction of what you want because you're not clear. You always be second guessing yourself. Okay, am I sure I should make that move? Maybe I shouldn't. You always be second guessing yourself. You always be going around in circles because you keep thinking, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not right. Maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I should do that. Because you are not sure if you're on the right path. But once mm. you get clear, and I mean in every area of your life, career, spiritual, you know, your whatever, every area, be clear what do I want so that way you can easily find someone who mirrors like MJ said that person that you want to be and once you see them I'm telling you something within you will leap you will, wow this person is my kind of person I align with them I align with their values they can help me in this area of my life because we share I just feel a connection to them sometimes exactly. you can't even explain the connection you feel it's like mm. Mm, this person I think they should be the person who is going to be instructing me or teaching me, or mentoring me, or holding my hands, or you know, on this journey of my career, and really on anything, really, not just career. I feel like what we're talking about, this thing we're talking about today, cuts across a whole spectrum of things, of who do I want to be, and just be that person. And I want to, you know, just make a little joke. 
and just ask my next question, which is MJ, as you see here, she has her, she, I'm like, how does she even manage this thing? You know, she's, mm -hmm. she's, she does exercises, she has a fitness routine. She you can mm -hmm. see how on, on point she, she looks, always looking beautiful, <laughs> never out of, you know, never caught on her words, if you get what I mean. She looks <laughs> good. She's a mom. She's a good wife, a great mom, if I say so myself. She's rocking in her career. She's done well for herself business-wise so far. She's consistent in everything she does. She exercises. And if you're in very mom's club, I'm, I'm sure you're listening to this person. We talked about the fact that we can be who we want to be. It is possible to be everything you want to be. Just be clear about what that looks like to you and pursue it courageously. So I just wanted to share a little bit about that. Like, how do you structure your day in such a way that gives you room to be able to do everything that you need to do and not, you know, drop any ball? How do you manage that structure and system in your life in that way? I, I think I'll start with gratitude. I think that um, the way that I was raised also plays a lot of role in how my life is actually like at the moment. And I'm so, and that's why I'm starting with gratitude. I'm really grateful for my parents, especially my mom, you know? So I woke up, I, I, I was raised in a, a home whereby we would wake up at about five o'clock uh, to pray and then we'll go about that day and when I was younger I would do chores then go open my mother's shop and then come back home have my shower go to school then go to lesson and then come back home make dinner and I was always working since I was a young child I'm really grateful that I listen you know the way it is in Europe you are the driver yeah, the chef, yeah, the everything. Another thing I'm also very grateful for is my husband. When I was younger in my marriage, we've been married about 17 years. When I was younger in my marriage, I was really immature. I was, uh, I wouldn't give room for like my husband to do anything. I wanted to do everything by myself. I wanted to be in charge and I was fooling myself. And I was missing out a lot. But as I've gotten older, more maturely, the man is my rock. I have to say that. He is my rock and I'm really grateful for that. So how do I plan my day? My day every day starts at about half four every day. And it starts from quiet time. Then it rolls Sorry, into my- can you say that again? Start at about what? <laughs> 4 a.m. Are you listening, <laughs> ladies? <laughs> so, and, and I'll tell you the reason why that is so. The reason why that is so is because, you see, at that time, everywhere is really quiet for me. I'm very productive at that time of the day. Everything is quiet. Everyone is quiet. So I jump into my quiet time. I try to journal every day. If I'm not using my gratitude journal, I'm using any other journal that I, that I think is uh, relevant to what I'm thinking about or what I want to achieve. Then I jump into my exercise. And once I do that, I jump into the shower. I sit by my desk and work on my business, okay? So by 8 a.m. Derish, I've done so many things that an average person wouldn't have been able to do, say, uh, even if they tried in three days, you know. So that is my routine now for years. And it has really helped me to find a balance between my work life and my business life. So at about eight o'clock, everybody is now waking up, doing their own thing. We have already finished for the day. Then I dress up and start my real work at about nine o'clock. So lunchtime, and thank God we are all working from home now. It makes everything really even easier because I'm not traveling. Traveling time now is used for other important things. So I start my real job and lunchtime would be around 12, 30, one o'clock. I try to do that with the boys because obviously they are at home as well. Then, but the thing is I finish my day the same way that I start. Once I finish from work, dinner time, then I'm not on social media uh, uh, commenting on 50 posts 
or anything like that. There's still work to be done on the business side. So I invest another like two hours. Well, I end up in bed every day at about 10 o'clock or after. And that will be me and my husband's time and on and on like that. And I repeat the next day. And that's it really. But it takes a lot of dedication and commitment. And someone may be wondering, ah, does she ever get tired? I do. And when I get tired, I rest. When I get tired, I turn off everything. One thing that I do every day, I turn my Wi-Fi off once it's like after, even if it's on and I see a message, I've created a boundary now that I won't respond until the next day, you know? So do I get tired? I get tired. But do I, am I committed to the things that I do? 100% because I want to have that youthful and fit body. I want to be able to have children who will look up to me and say, oh, mom, she's doing fantastic. I want my husband to say, one day my husband called me uh, when I, I, I sent him a text that I said, oh, I just got this opportunity that I've applied to. She, he called me Ed Strong. Ed Strong in the sense that there's nothing that you, this girl wants that you can get. So that kind of a thing. So that's really me in a nutshell. I'm not a superwoman, but I do have the, the supernatural behind me saying, girl, if you want it, you can do it. That kind of thing. <laughs> Absolutely, thank you. I mean, just listening to you, and my, I see my lady sharing in the comments and I'm just laughing <laughs> here because like, you're just preaching my message. You know, we, funny thing was just this week, we were talking around this same thing of structure systems and we've just created a whole lot of resources again for those in the VIP Moms Club, it's all under the VIP Moms Insider. And you have all these things like how to put your, your scheduling, calendar, things you can download, use for yourself, your, your, your to-do list, your daily. We have all of those things there. So I'm just hoping that you're using them because there's no point having something that you don't use. You know, yeah. I have mine, I have mine. I have some, sometimes hard copy. My calendar is right here on my desk. I can, and I have one on, on my computer as well. I can just quickly flip and say, what do I need to do today? What do I need to focus on today? What is urgent for me to focus on in this season? And I can turn everything else off and say, I, will, I choose to focus on this one rather than, um, you know, being all over the place. And that's what we talk about clarity again. Being clear about what you want for every time tells you you cannot spend 10 hours with replying emails. I mean, I learned that one from MJ. MJ taught me that one. This thing of, she say, and I remember she mentioned it once. I just saw it on her. I learned by observation. I just saw it on her post. Which is when she said something, I remember what she's talking about, about how she checks her emails a certain time of day. And I'm like, oh, perfect. So even when I see the email, I don't need to respond to the email right now. I just leave it like, whatever. When my email time is, not, is, is um, on my schedule, and I can reply all the emails, I can allow your urgent to become my urgent, yeah. right? Because I know what my urgent should be in this season or in this, at this hour, on this day, because you cannot dictate to me how I should live my life, right? But a lot of us are not disciplined enough. Allow yourself to have boundaries and say, these are the things that will not happen in this hour. And explain to people around you. After a while, people, need, people will start to learn that this is how you are. And they start to comply and say, she won't respond until 10 p.m. So just give her some time, you know? Because mm. we need to teach people around us how to treat us. A lot of us are so afraid to say no to people that you, are, you end up not being able to get anything done. What do you really, really, really want? How are you going to make sure that you're pursuing them using your day? I like to say, no matter what you say, you can say anything you want. If I don't see yourself or your dreams, your vision on your, on your schedule, they're just playing. That's if correct. your dreams and vision are on your schedule, you're just, you're just playing, you're not ready. This career you want to grow, do we see your growth pattern? Do we see your growth <laughs> journey? Do we see the one hour, two hours you're spending every day? I mean, MJ says she has 40 certification in HR. Please tell me how MJ got the time, the confidence, the courage, the discipline to do 40 certifications in HR in how many years? Yeah. yeah. It's because she knows what she wants and she just disciplined. She goes after everything. And say, I'm not going to allow all of these other things to distract me. I'm just going to focus on what I want, right? That's correct. I, I think if you if you focus on adding value to yourself and adding value to your nation, you don't even have to chase after like a huge amount of following or anything like that. The value you put out 
will make the right people connect with you. That's Good. personally me. That's I remember when I interviewed for the job I now have, the lady said, I can see you're doing so much. You know, I know that I wasn't the most qualified or the most experienced, but the hunger, the lady saw the hunger, the iron manager saw the hunger and said, this person that is giving herself so much must be able to give us so much. And I'm telling you, value will speak. Mm. It will speak. You know, I know the hand of God is behind everything that we do as his children, but value always speaks. So you see, they always say that if you are, if you are gifted or if you are talented, but you will not do anything with, with that gift or talent that you have, it will be taken away from you. Yes. It will be given to the people who really will drive what they have and use what they have. That, that's my own personal philosophy. And I think and is in all areas of our lives, whether it's in your career, whether it's in your business, whether it's in your side also, whether it's in your marriage, whether it's about your money, whether it's about your spiritual growth, if you continue to deliberately invest in yourself, you can do anything. You can go anywhere. I'm telling you, you can. Especially yes. with your career, a lot of women tend to be rigid. I've been there before. It's a journey that I've been on. It's a journey that I, even though I was working at some stage, I was just in one spot. Mm. I wasn't moving. You know, I will leave one job, go to another. It's still the same spot. There was no clarity. There was no clarity. But as soon as I just allowed myself to think deeper and bigger, to say, mm, what is it I want to be? And how can I be that thing? Everything began to fall into place. You have to put in the work. I have to say that you have to deliberately put in the work. You have to make time to put in the work. But after the work is done, the result will come. That's after the work is done, the result will come. That's it. After the work is done, the result will come. It will. Value, it will. value, value. What kind of value are you adding to yourself? How without value? Because if nobody's going to invest in when they don't see the value, like, mm -hmm. they don't even see that you're investing in yourself. They don't mm -hmm. see your drive. They don't see how much you want to be able to be that person. So why, mm. would they, why should they follow you? Why should they even invest in you when you're not willing to invest in yourself? Mm. Why would another person be willing to invest in you, even in your office? Why would they be willing to give mm. you that thing? After the work, don't worry. Yeah, after, after the work is done. I know, I know even the Bible says something like, one of my favorite scriptures, and I always share it on my Facebook, is never, never be weary in doing good. In this season, your reward will come. I will always preach it to the younger children in church. They don't understand what I mean. Even that, that scripture went further to say, even if it tarries, wait for it, wait for it. It will come. It's amazing that these things, delay may happen. And that's why, especially for people living in this part of the world, you hear people telling you, oh, black people don't do that job. Oh, uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, they don't take black. No, no, don't let anybody deceive you or turn your head around. Don't. You can, you can be, I will be a director of human resources in the next uh, two years, thereabout. That's the next best step for me. I will be anything that I want to be, you know. Don't let people fool you that it's not possible. Don't let people say, oh, you can only work in the shop. Uh, you can only be cleaners. You can only be this or that. All jobs are great, but you don't be the one that will settle for the least of them all. Don't be the one. I say, be the best that you can be at work, at home, in your family. Everything will fall in, in, in place, but you need to put in the work. That, that's what I think is best for us to be anything that we, we want to be or we can be. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you so much, MJ. I don't know if anybody has any question they want sure. to ask her uh, before she has to go. We already, like I've had such a great, great, great time uh, just chatting with you with you to, uh, today. Thank you so much. I'm gonna please drop your question so we can hear it. Um, drop yes. it so we can share, share all, I mean, where are you? Let me find you and see if I can, 
I need so you can show your question. Okay, Omolola, let me find you right here. Okay, please go on and ask your question, Omolola. All right, thank you so much for this um, information. This is my first time I'm joining you, ma'am, and I'm so I'm so glad I I, I did. Welcome. And thank you. Um, thanks so much, uh, MJ, for sharing your story. And you have really given me confidence also in, you know, coming out and share my story and even all the things I've gone through. So my question is to find a mentor, which, of course, I'm in the, in, in, at this stage in my life where I'm actually looking for exactly a female a mentor and a female black coach because I'm in the US and it's so hard for me to see you know someone that's even at the place of my work to say okay I want to look up onto this person apart from um, interacting with books which you know um, uh, webinars or all the resources that it my um, the the coach that I want to in, 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 in terms of proximity now and how do I actually you know um, get into contact of you know someone that I know that is up there like not two three um, levels from where I am now I'm looking at my career now uh, as an IT person I don't want to go and meet a VP say okay you want to be my coach even if it's a black black American or something how do I um, navigate through proximity getting into this person's life for mentoring or for coaching especially for mentoring because for coaching of course we can always get but for mentoring the proximity apart from interacting with the resources yeah I, I, one of the things i mentioned earlier was when i was changing my career uh, thank you again for that question very fantastic one of the things that i did was that i i sought out four mentors okay four of them I mentioned that one was a junior person, okay? One was kind of like peer to peer and one was in the position that I wanted to go to and one was all the way up there. One of the ways you can connect with people other than their work is just to follow them. First of all, you can follow them on LinkedIn to start with, connect with their posts, connect with what they share. If you've read their book before, you can email them to say that, oh, I have a question about this. Start a relationship with them by asking them question. Writers, authors, speakers, coaches, mentors, they love that when people connect with them. One of the things I shared in my personal branding video is that any brand that was go far in life has to connect with the, with the people who follow them. So if you want to uh, connect with a mentor, connect with them firstly by connecting with them on LinkedIn, network with them, connect with their work on LinkedIn. If you've read their book, write to them. And eventually, once, you, once they start uh, opening up to you or uh, uh, connecting with you, you can email them, ask them. This was exactly what I did. I connected with the people first. Then I started building that relationship with them gradually. Then I emailed them. And amazingly, they all came back to me. And these are accomplished people. So the people who, who won't respond to you are people who are not really genuinely interested in helping people. So people who genuinely want to help other people will definitely come back to you. Personally, there's nobody that will reach out to me that I don't go back to because I now have a chain of mentees now. I always go back to everyone. I go back to everyone personally. So in your own case, look around you. Who do you want to be your mentor? Connect with them by their resources, using their resources. However, take it further, connect with them on LinkedIn, uh, interact with their posts or their work, email them eventually when you start building that relationship with them. I think that's one of the best ways to do it. Absolutely. Thank you, MG, for answering that question. And it's, I mean, there is an answer, that's probably what I would say, because I see that a lot of times, if we don't, um, sometimes we're afraid to connect because we think they will not respond, but it's not true. I mean, for example, some of the people that I've connected with to do things for me eventually, people that, what I do is, I don't wait until I need people before I start to connect. I start to connect even before I need you. So you can't say you don't know me, if you get what I mean, because I've been here yeah. putting your, my, maybe comment on your post, engaging with your content intelli intelligently 
talking about maybe something you wrote in your book or something like that. And then when I need you and I put a, a comment in your DM, you will say, I've never seen her before. You will say, oh, well, I remember you asked me this thing before, or we talked about this thing before. You're likely to remember me because I've made an impression on your heart. And you know, one of the things that, I, that happened to me recently, I've been trying to, I've been trying to bring someone to come um, be a speaker at a conference. And I thought, oh my God, will she ever come? I just said, you know what? You can never know, just ask. My goodness, it took a while. But they call back and say, we are, we are happy to let you know that this person, I'm not going to mention the name right now. <laughs> and I was like, I was over the moon. I'm not even going to joke. I was like, wow, you mean I got her, I'm able to get her to come? Yeah. It blew my mind. But I started, first of all, I joined her community, started interacting with her, started, you know, just putting myself in her space. And then I just emailed her team and said, I want her to come. They were like, okay, yeah, that's what you have to do. This I'm like, oh my goodness, I got her. You can't, just keep, just keep going. Keep going. One day, keep knocking on that door. One day, somebody's going to open it up to you. Wow. They will. And they always do. I, I think <sighs> that personally, you just have to know how to, you just don't really write to people and say, oh, be my mentor. A lot mm -hmm. of times they won't respond to you. Um, however, if you continue to put yourself in their space, everybody comes back. They will always come back to you. They will come back to they you. Will, yeah. the one, it's only the ones who want to help. They will. Exactly. It may take a while. I mean, sometimes it's like or two before they even responded to my first message. Second one took another like two weeks. But all in all, they responded. And I was able yes. to, and I was able to reach them one way or the other. Yeah, so please That's keep correct. going. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> okay, someone said, I've been clear about purpose and all. Are there books? Are you part of this community? If you ask me. <laughs> you are in the right community. Connect with our community. That's, what we, that's our message here. That's correct. Who am I? Join Mom University. We're starting up enrollment in another. Oh, you are new. Oh, but I don't even know what your name is, right? Okay. That's why, because yeah. I didn't even know who I was talking to, because you have God's favor <laughs> so, on, your, on your profile. So I didn't even know who you was. You know, you are new here. So welcome. I'm happy to connect with you. You are in the right place. Um, you know, join the VIP Moms Club. Go to our website, mothersarising.org. Go to Mom University. Um, if anybody's on the team, please um, definitely share the links to the things I'm talking about, members of the team. Mom University, mothersarising.org. Connect with me, olusheyashu.com. Be a part of this community. You want to know purpose? You want to know clarity about your journey? That's what we do here. <laughs> All right, if anybody's trying to reach MJ, I put a, a few links. MJ is hosting an amazing... Um, Back to work bootcamp for professionals from March 4th to March 25th. And I can tell you that MJ is an amazing teacher. I've been under her teaching. So I know she's an amazing, will break it down for you the way you need to learn. Right. So if you want to be a part of that bootcamp, uh, the links are there. Connect with her on YouTube. Find her on social media. Just find her. She's the best person that can be in your space. All right. Find her and you'll be able to get access to uh, some of her resources and things like that. All right. And if you want to connect with us as well, like I said, please reach out to us um, on, I'm still waiting for those links, for those in the community, anybody on our team that is here, please share the links um, right here. Someone said they want to, okay, yeah, I see your, um, your message. Please just send me an email at me at olusheyashu.com. If you want to reach me, me at olusheyashu.com. Looks like, I don't know whether team members are sleeping, whether they are here or not, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anything in the, in the chat. Um, yes, please connect with me right there. If you send me an email, I'm more than willing to support you through whatever it is that you want. Um, MJ is also there, I'm sure you can reach her as well, on social media, and it's been amazing. Thank you, see, um, for sharing that. It's been amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you everyone who's been a part of this chat today. Thank you, MJ, for coming. Thank you for having me. I it's, hope that- I had a great, great time. I was able to share uh, one or two things to help people. Uh, like Coach said, you can connect with me. Like, there's nobody who sends me messages that, that I don't come back to because I know that if people didn't really help me on my journey, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be here today. I'm telling you, it, it, and you, you have an incredible coach as well. Um, this is a powerhouse in, right in front of you, you know. User, user. When I say user, I mean really, really user. User, because your life will change forever. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you, thank you for, for putting that in there, MJ. Do you have any last words before you go? 
I I think that I will I will finish uh, with what I started with. I will finish with those three C's again. And those three things, I actually have them somewhere right here mm -hmm. be, beside me. <laughs> have clarity, have clarity. And one of the best ways to have clarity is to seek the Father. I, I, I know that that is one of the things that has really helped me. Seek the Father. Find, discover what you really want for your life, whether in your career or in your ministry or in your business seek that first secondly be confident be confident to go after what you truly want show up every day for yourself be confident and 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 finally you have to be courageous on your journey you see people who just won't like you because you show up every day yes you yes. see people who think you are too much because you always show up, you always have something to say. You see people, it's not about them really, it's about you. It's about what is that thing that you want? What's your why, what's your reason? What is one thing that will motivate you to show up every day? To show up every day and do that thing back to back to back to back to back. This is how you can really affect change in the world, in your community, to the audience that will come your way and in the life of your own family as well. Because if you're doing it, your children are doing it, they'll see you doing it. They, they will have no choice than to do it themselves. And those will be my last words. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Those, those are profound last words. You know, just mm -hmm. go after those three things, put it, write it down somewhere. This is where you can see it every day and tell yourself, I'm gonna wake up every day knowing what I want. I wanna, I'll have clarity. Mm -hmm. I'll be confident, you know, to show up confidently every time and I will be courageous mm -hmm. to go after what profound words thank you again MJ for being a part of this today it's my pleasure yeah, thank you so much and then next time uh, we hope to see everyone again to join us for another um, episode of, um, of our mommy chat with Olusha with another guest we are going to be interviewing another person who's going to be sharing with us profound things also like this also you can connect with us of course on our website, mothersarising.org. Uh, you can also connect with us at momuniversity.com uh, or connect with me at olusheyashu.com and email our team if you need any support. Find us on social media. We are here to support you. We are here for mothers. If you're a mom, you should be here. <laughs> That's what we do. We breathe and we leave moms. All right, we're just here to support you through your journey. God bless you, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care and God bless you. Bye, everyone.